All right, we have some Civic content for you. Not just Civic content, but Civic SI Mugen Edition. So let's answer a couple of questions. Uh, you might have seen the episodes of the EP3, George selling EP3 and getting this car. And of course, the number one question, George. Yo, that's not the right lip. Oh, okay. So that answers the question, that is the right lip? That's the right lip, but it's been bumped a handful of times. It's got a crack in it over here. Yeah, so basically the lip was replaced, and I think at the time when the dealer replaced it, this lip is, what, like 300 bucks, yeah, and this one is... that's 280, this is 800. So the dealer goes, yeah, that one looks just as good, the customer's never gonna know, or who knows, I don't know how the whole thing came about, but that's the answer, the lip is here. It's not right, but it doesn't look bad. No, it's not. And I mean, it doesn't look bad until you actually see this lip, then you realize this lip is actually way cooler with these little canards right here. But that is a good lip, it looks good on the car, so he's going to fix that, paint it, put that on there, so hopefully that answers the question. I know I'm being kind of a little goofy and a little bit sarcastic, but you'd be amazed how many people that don't look at this, yeah. they only see that. Every time this gets posted anywhere, hey, did you know that's not the right lip for the car? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy that people would much rather point out that you have a zit on your face before they actually ask your name. They just want to remind you, you do have a zit on your face. Quick talk about the car. I want to show you something a little bit different on the inside. I'm going to get George to fire this up because this is really a cool feature. Tell us about, or tell us what you know about this replacement screen. Uh, everyone asked what it is. I finally figured out it's a, a Desada, an app for gauges, the radio, YouTube. You can search the internet, uh, Apple CarPlay. The, anything you could ever need. I like the background picture too. Yeah. I just noticed that. Yeah, I made sure to download that off the internet and put it on there. Nice. So this obviously is the custom surround that somebody sells that replaces the whole uh, surround here for the yeah. climate control knobs and yeah, the you, vent. You just take your buttons out for the AC and the hazard and put it in there. But yeah, it's the whole thing with the screen and everything in it. The keys are on, so if I bump that, those will work. And the wipers work. Yeah. So. You was talking about putting the Honda app on here, right? Is that yeah. something you've tried yet? The uh, the standard Honda app works. They have a new one for uh, dashes, like a Civic Si dash, like the new dash, but it doesn't work on this one. What I is, read that it works. It, in, it it just shuts right down. Okay. Uh, it it did work with the other one, but I haven't reinstalled it yet because you have to in, uninstall every version of Honda to try and put the dash version on. Okay. So if anybody knows anything about this or this kind of, this is Android based. Yeah. So if anybody knows anything about this, go ahead and comment. Let us know what we need to do to get the Honda app to work on here. Because I know you had gauges on this that this picks up from the car, but it wasn't the Honda gauges, was yeah. it? Well, no, they have, like I said, there's this torque thing. And if you go into the settings, the OBD2 adapter, it shows the Flash Pro on here, yeah, but it won't sync with it. Okay. But it says on Honda to site that this works with Torque Pro, Okay. but I can't get it to work. That's the first time it said to reboot, but that would mean the Android device, which is this guy. Got it, okay. All right, so the car is essentially stock. One of the reasons we wanted to do this first episode is kind of just introduce you to this car. It's gonna be getting a few little uh, changes along the way, but the car is essentially stock with an intake, right? Yep, just the k and FIPK intake, and now a Flash Pro. Okay, so a Flash Pro, which is this guy right here. So what we're thinking of doing is just, so you guys can get an idea, is we're going to put the, is it got the factory map in right now, or did you put some kind of map on it? It has the drop in for the k and intake. Okay, so what we'll do is let's put it on the dyno, let's load the factory map, we'll show you real quick what we're going to do. We'll load the factory map, bring it up to temperature, do two runs back to back just to see what it's making, then we will put the k and map from Flash Pro. There, obviously when you buy this, it comes with some pre-installed software. You're just going to load it on here for that intake. We'll see what it does, see if it makes actually any difference. We'll pop the hood, let's show you the intake real quick. So if you're familiar, this is the K&N intake. It is the carb uh, legal intake, so it's a pretty popular intake, obviously for California. Uh, it's an open element, so obviously it's not the coolest 
system out there. It does have a tube here that draws air from the factory and it kind of blows it into this chamber. This is all open and of course, you know, the engine is all buried under this cowl and of course the exhaust manifold is back there. So this is probably not the best intake for it. More than likely it's better than stock, but we'll see. We'll get, we'll get an idea of what the reflash is worth also but other than that this is stock right nothing else yeah different. i haven't even tried to clean it under here yet I've had no. it for a month and i've had to drive it every day since i got it <laughs> well between christmas and being busy and everything else so then the powder coater taking a little extra time off so that's not back yet <laughs> yeah this is going to get done i know you have plans of cleaning this hey we'll talk about that on another episode but right now let's get a base run Let's make sure the factory flash is in there or the factory calibration and see exactly what you should expect with one of these guys on here. We don't have the factory box, so we can't do a true baseline, but this is probably only worth a little bit of power. All right, first thing when you switch on, check for updates. If there is an update, go ahead and get it, which we're gonna get right now. This will take a couple of minutes to download. Once we have that, we will flash the factory computer with the factory calibration so we can do the baseline dyno. So once you have the latest update, it's gonna update the firmware on the Flash Pro. Okay, so new calibration, stock equivalent. All right, about 90 seconds, we will have the stock calibration. All right, so it is a beautiful 82 degrees here in Florida. It's January, so I'm sure you guys are jealous. Some of you guys are dealing with snow. We're dealing with 82 degrees. So I should essentially be stuck. So we'll bring it up to temperature and we'll do a couple of runs in third gear. So we're at 122 degrees. We want to get this up to temperature and stabilize. That way we can make sure our temperatures are the same. Back to back. Someone's going to hit that beeping. Can you turn it off? I don't think so. Shoot, it in a little bit later, we'll be able to see a video of this car. I yeah. see super late VTEC. VTEC is, uh, this is my favorite like channel. I like this channel. So I, just see I watch this one. So if you stay tuned, you will see the video of this car on the screen of this car. <laughs> All right, so we're at 174. Let's get it up to temperature and I'll kick the fans on and then let's do some running. All right, so we've got a couple of big fans pushing air this way across the engine bay so we're not going to try and fudge it and make it look like it's heat soaked or anything like that all right george whenever you're ready i always like to keep things consistent faking your dyno is lying to yourself get the car really really hot and then doing a run with ice you're just kind of lying it's not worth it you gotta make sure you know what makes power Pretty healthy. Look at that late V tech. Super late V tech. Let me put torque on there. We turned torque off. Our last car had an interference, and it was giving us all kinds of crazy numbers. So we have to turn it off. Uh, 143 torque. Yeah, look at that crazy late V tech right there. So we'll keep it running. Let's do another back-to-back -back run. Let's keep it consistent. Let's do another run. Let's get a back sound clip here. This has the Mugen exhaust, which is the factory exhaust for the Mugen Civic Si. Let's get you a sound clip right here. again just through the heat so because we didn't let the car cool down if you was to let it cool down for 15 minutes it'd probably give you one or two more power up here but again it's not consistent power so we're not going to use that as our run so let's go ahead and put the cannon map in there all right so let's go over to calibration let's look in here 
Uh, we have K&N, there it is, K&N V2 short ram intake. Uh, that's the one that we're going to click on right there, you see that? And we'll open that. And key on, George? Yep. Alright, let's upload that map. And 90 seconds, we'll be back. Alright, so we should definitely see the uh, VTEC dropped. I believe the VTEC is about 4 or 42 on the reflash, so we should see a lot of mid range. So that's our runs. You see it's got a lot in the mid-range, but it actually falls off all the way up top. Which is not a huge amount, but it's three horsepower. So let's take a look and see what difference is there. We'll give it a quick cool down. We'll do another run back to back just to see if it was just heat soak. It might be just because the car was hot, but it looks like that second run lost power everywhere. Let's do another back-to-back -back run. Let's verify our results here. You never take the first run and say that's it. Uh, let's just take the torque off here so there's not as many jiggly lines. But as you see, it makes power here, but it loses here, and it loses here. And that's why the Cantoon is not always the best option. We'll maybe prove that. I <laughs> might be wrong here, but let's do another run and then maybe we'll tinker around on the keyboard and we'll see what we can do if we can make a little bit of power so before we mess around i'm looking at this right here i've never messed with these usually i start with stock and then just tune i never i never drop these in but we're here and yeah we're making content right um and if you're not familiar with tinkering around you just want to click on these you're not really gonna hurt anything so let's do this just for giggles so we'll do completely stock tuned and we'll load that the key on george yep uh let's do this you know the drill all right so let's start it let's get up to temperature see if we have uh, dropped down it's not going to make a big difference but this is higher this is lower so we're trying to keep everything consistent so when you're dynoing try and keep all these numbers pretty much the same so you know if you're making power from cool down or power from changes it's, it's a good rule of thumb to do that all right go ahead and start up let's get it warm all right, 187. All right, George, you ready? Yep. Let's go ahead and do another run. We'll just verify. Temps are the same. See if that tune map makes any more power. Let's uh, declutter this a little bit. Let's close that. Uh, let's open first map and open last map. So, making the VTEC changeover is better. It's still down on power a little bit. It's matching our horsepower. But if we was to look at this and look at the Canon map, makes more power up top so what we're going to do is take a cross between the two of these kind of blend them together but it gives you an idea of the stock map the stock tune map and the canon short ram map let's open that one so you can see it so let's go ahead and blend these and uh, I want to do a little bit of tinkering on the keyboard see what it does all right 174 we'll give it a second by the time I get into position we're tuning at about 178, 179, so we're close enough. Um, 
much smoother. It's uh, making power pretty much everywhere now. It's smooth. So this is what we had. So yeah, we're making, we're not losing anywhere. This was the factory map which made the best power and this is the map I just changed. All I basically changed is some VTEC through here and cam angle uh, versus this one which was the K&N flash. Let me take the torque off so you can see it. I see the K&N one. It lost it all the way through here. So that's, that's pretty good right there. So of course there is a lot of unique features on this car over a Civic Si. Now if only we knew someone that knew more about this than us. Hey everybody, this, Hunter for Jason here. This guy is in the know, he'll answer the question. And and Maximus Mugen is here. Say hi buddy. Hi. Hey. Oh, ho, ho. Wow, so it's so good to see you again, Jason. Good so to see you guys. You've kind of followed this along. You've seen oh, yeah. we talk about this. Oh yeah. I know a little bit, and of course now George has the car, he knows a little bit more about the differences as well. But just give me a quick, what's different about this car? So over the, the regular SI, this has got the, the Mugen wheels, the body kit, the rear spoiler, Mugen exhaust, Mugen suspension, the shift knobs, and of course the plaques that said Mugen SI. Yeah. Very, very, very limited, only available in the US. They were, at the time, to tell you the truth, I was selling these at the time, and no one really wanted these cars. They I remember too. They sat dealerships lots for months and months. We couldn't give them away, and now, of course, they're bringing all the money, because collectors want them. It's a collector's car now. Yeah. It's a really, really nice setup. I remember too, a friend of mine, he still works at Honda, he's won the text there. He said the same thing. He goes, these things are coming in. They were marked up a little bit, but then the dealerships knew they were special, so sure. they would mark them up. Yep. Which priced them out of, you know, priced them out of the of average course. person, saying, "Well, of course, makes sense." But, but I yeah. do a couple of little performance upgrades, as you know, and you. They're a terrific car. Some, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a terrific it's car. It's a great car. It's a four door, so plenty of room, right? Plenty of room in the back. We was just talking about the split dash, and I remember when it first came out. Because yeah. I'm used to Civics and CRXs and yep. Integras. I saw this and I went, this is awful. Why would you do this and put this up here? Now, did you? then you drove it. And then I sat in the car. Yeah. I, I had this conversation, a friend of mine at the dealership, he sends me a picture and he said, believe it or not, it works. I get in a car, I sit right here. This is seamless. It's, it's almost a heads-up display. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And the way George was saying, this is almost like a motorcycle style cluster. Very, so it's yeah, just similar. got your very basic information. And then you got other information up here. Yes. It's very cool. I remember the EK Civic came out. As soon as I saw it, the headlights are awful. They're too big. Yeah. <laughs> they look and, like a bug. Yeah. And you yeah. go, I can't get over it. Now I look at the EK and I go, it's still one of my favorite Hondas of all time. I agree. It just really, it's just a like classic. It's just timeless shape. I, I do have a question for you, though. Yes. What's wrong with this lip? <laughs> <laughs> this is the factory lip. What are you talking we, about? We were playing with that earlier. I like the way it looks, honestly. I but do, no too. No matter what you guys say on YouTube, I like the way this looks on the car. I like the way it looks. <laughs> we were just talking about it. I like the way it looks until you put the Mugen lip on, and then you notice it's, you it notice looks better. But there's course. nothing wrong with this lip. You pronounce, you pronounce it Mugen, not Mugen. Mugen. No. Okay. No, and can I tell you something? I had the, the corporate guys from Mugen come out, and we actually did a video on how to pronounce the name. It's not Mugen, it's not Mugen, it's not, um, uh, Mugen, people say. Yeah, it costs when you don't meet anybody that has actually been there, everybody Talk just cool. pronounces it however they see it. Yeah. It's like greedy. Remember the greedy exhaust back in the day? And you go, where did you get greedy from? <laughs> or G-Ready. Where did, where did you get that from? enjoying the episode and it gives you an idea of what to expect from the reflash from the canon intake 
Uh, part two is going to show you the Scun 2 header, George ordered the Scun 2 header, it just came in so that is going to be on part two so I can share a little bit of detail with you. Thanks to Jason for coming by, he's a great guy, always cool to talk to and he will talk cars with you forever. More content on the Z06 coming up, finally broke the 500 miles which means it's going to go on the dyno here soon, we're going to do a baseline run just the way it sits how much power do these things make it is the manual transmission i'm expecting it's going to do like 550 560 to the wheels something like that stay tuned for that and we will show you what the lht x pipe will sound like and what kind of power it will make and we'll talk about that stay tuned for that on a corvette episode until then see you on the next video guys thanks for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe click the link and have a great day